Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and welcome back to the Pro Game Review Series. Today I will be talking about one of my own games from the 2020 Ink Cup preliminaries to compete for the North American representative in the top 32 of the 2020 Ink Cup. In this game, uh, my opponent was Andy Liu. So Andy doesn't need any introduction. Um, Andy is known as Big Bag Wolf on KGS. Um, he was one of the first two North American Go professionals who uh, qualified in 2012. Um, he learned, learned to play Go at age 8 in Queens. Um, he was known, he was most famous for winning the 2006 US Open. Um, defeating all very strong players, and he was the youngest representative to the World Amateur Go Championships. So, after doing a little more research about myself, I became pro in 2015 um, to become the third AGA professional. Um, and uh, this, is, this is very weird because I'm talking about myself. Um, I also uh, won the Canadian Open in 2014. I also uh, made it to the top 16 in the third M Lily Cup. Uh, so what was interesting is that um, I was searching myself on. I was trying to go get to Sensei's library here. Um, I actually noticed uh, a Reddit post um, about me, and I so I opened it, and uh, I noticed that this was one of the uh, fellow Go Club members when I was at the. Uh, Toronto Go Club, um, and I totally missed um, this post. And uh, I just wanted to say, if 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 you watch this video, I'm very grateful because he actually uh, translated um, this whole situation. Because the M Lily Cup uh, tournament in China isn't very broadcasted very well in North America, so uh, so that was interesting, and also brought back uh, very fond memories of the time, uh, which was actually you know, three years ago already, which, wow, time flies. I can't believe it was three years ago. But, um, yeah, moving on, and right now I'm already playing for the uh, 2020 Ink Cup. So without further ado, let's get right into the game. So in this game, I was playing Black. Um, so here, uh, pretty basic moves. Um, I In this game, I decided to go for a uh, double three four opening in the corner enclosure. Typically, I go with the star point, um, but actually in this case, um, Andy, who's white, he played this star point, which um, didn't allow me to play like the opening that I play all the time, um, which is the um, which is uh, this one. Um, yeah, so I play this all the time, and uh, so he. And I kind of regret playing this because if I just played the star point, I probably would have been able to play my opening. So, a little bit of a psychology uh, beginning there for this game. So, by the way, um, we actually played this game um, in person, um, which actually was really nice. Um, um, actually, uh, so Andy and I, um, although we haven't been no like we haven't known each other in person for very long, but we definitely like heard each other because I was uh, mostly in Canada for uh, before, um, until after college um, while he was uh, dominating uh, the US go scene um, and uh, it was yeah it was nice to see him and uh, I really I definitely prefer in-person games because it's you know the atmosphere the whole um, feel for the game is, is, is all different but anyway yeah this game was played in person and uh, so which actually maybe allowed me to play a little more I guess retro moves I don't know if you can call it old but I mean these days you definitely these moves kind of moves are very uncommon now in professional games because of these uh, recent AI dominance um, everyone has been studying uh, AI openings um, right now and uh, this is a move that would typically lose a lot of uh, winning percentage um, because uh, typically um, yeah I think that if white is able to get this this is typically a good result for white. If white, if black plays either the jump or the knight's move, these exchanges um, typically are. Yeah, I think take them as good exchanges, um, because actually later this group is difficult to attack and it presses black down in sente. 
Um, so in this case, because this extension is very far, it's not very good for block to uh, push and cut. So if you're wondering about this, typically you need a close extension like the two space or the one space to uh, make this push and cut. So just be aware of that. Um, typically you don't, you can't really push and cut unless you have a stone that's kind of close. So in this game, Annie ch didn't choose to play the uh, knight's move here. He actually chose to attach. Uh, now this uh, this move is typically played when the right side is empty, and uh, when Black Hane is here, this is uh, almost like a Joseki. Um, so after this result, White cuts, Black turns, and White jumps, and uh, Black makes the Atari. So I think in this case. Because Black had a stone here, I felt this was okay because this group isn't completely settled yet, um, and I thought that uh, I should have uh, a means to attack this if White doesn't answer. So in the game, why well, answer? Oh, I should mention. Um, in this case, Black sometimes Atari's this way. In which case, this exchange White would have benefited, and White would just turn and uh, extend out three times, and then presum presumably White will go back here. And this stone is kind of out of place, like it's maybe, it's splitting the side, but it's not really doing that much, like if white just caps and uh, make a loose connection. It's hard for black to make good use of that stone, and um, even though black has a lot of territory on both sides, well, a lot of territory in the left corner, um, it feels like it's hard to use that first move advantage. Like white is dividing black already and separating into small areas, so kind of feels like a better or an easier game for white to handle. So after the turn, this is possible, but it's um, less good because after this, later on there's an attachment here, um, which is rather annoying um, for this kind of shape. So black doesn't really have to answer to this stone very much. So for example, black attached, and typically white would hane and black would wedge, and then black white would be forced to make these Ataris, and then there would be a cut here. So this actually stone that split the side can actually be easily connected back to the larger group. So um, in this case, um, this feels kind of a little bit better. So in the game, Black White played the knight's move here. And then I extended. So of course, I, I checked the uh, AIs. and the, um, So this, this AI called Hawkeye, because it's kind of easily accessible. Um, it's 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 um, like a version of Leo Zero, um, and obviously they said I, I should make this. And I think right now it's relatively even. I mean, I, may, maybe not obviously, but I guess it's still early on, and um, no player made any ridiculous moves. So assuming it's relatively even. Um, but actually, interestingly, the the move that I made in the game, which is the two space extension, wasn't too bad. Um, in this case, I was kind of expecting the knight's move, and I wasn't really sure yet whether I wanted to push and cut or um, just simply extend. Extending is probably not the best option because after black adding a move then white is playing the knight's move. Um, so potentially um, I would push and cut and then it will become like this. So actually the good thing about this is white isn't able to get an extra push here because obviously black would uh, play a tiger's mouth. Um, because already there's already stone at K17. Um, so in this case, I think the fight wouldn't be too bad. So if white jumps here or play the Kosumi, um, black should be okay. So in the game, white um, didn't choose to play um, the knight's move. Instead, white played to choose to play the shoulder hit. And I think the meaning for this move is quite obvious. If black blocks, then when white plays the knight's move, during the push and cut, um, this shape is a little much worse for black. So if if black wedges and cuts, then um, obviously this is worse than the uh, variation that I previously showed. So um, this would be very good. So at least there's this, and also if, then if black extends under, white can also attach back. So locally, this would be um, easy for white to press black down and uh, settle this right group here. So in game, decided to attach. And um, actually, the 
normally with this shape, you typically don't want to attach, but this case is kind of special. The reason why you don't want to attach, because um, this is quite a common shape when you have this super light, large knight shape in the de-evasion and attach. Remember, always remember that you don't want a Hane here. Um, almost all the time this Hane is bad, unless it's in a very special case, because after the Hane, you can't Atari out, because, well, this shape is absolutely done. Um, so it's a very bad shape. Um, and if you connect back, then this exchange is very bad for white. So re always remember that you should wedge directly, um, or extend. Um, the wedge relies on the ladder, so if black Atari is under and connects, then black must, white typically needs to flatter. Sometimes if you Atari connect it, it's also acceptable. Um, but most of the time, you need to be able to ladder this. So typically, you kind of look for ladder going this way, another ladder going the other way, which is when black captures the other stone. You should be able to ladder this. Um, after you make the Atari exchange, you should be, should be able to ladder this. So these are very important things to keep in mind with the wedge. But you typically, when white, when white can wedge, this result is difficult for black because, well, now black has to extend and then white can go inside into the corner. So, but in this case, this is actually acceptable for black because um, after this sente, black can extend. And, be, and so this is actually a very bad exchange. So even though locally the, in the corner it's kind of good for white, but since this is a bad exchange, I thought it was relatively acceptable. Um, so in this case, white didn't play there, white chose to just ignore, and then so we have like a situation here. So in the game, I played the Tiger Smelt, which I kind of regret. I definitely should have played this, and this is the first move um, that AIs think that actually made quite a big difference. Well, except for like my, like if you can say my two, three, four points are bad because, you know, they should have been star points, but um, this actually, this move actually lost about 5%. Um, in the game, I played the Tiger's Mouth. Um, actually, the reason why I did this was that for this move, there's attachments um, on the second line, which I really didn't like. Um, so yeah, I didn't. It's not really clear to me why this is so much worse. Perhaps later, when Black uses the object of this stone, White having stones here um, might help. So I think that's the only reason that I can think of that that I can think of. So this is um, after in the game White Hane and uh, Atari immediately to help the side, and then White Tanukis and takes the corner. So at this point, I think it's relative even. Black has a lot of territory, two big corners, and uh, White is um, developing a very quick opening. So this is kind of uh, very like Andy style. Andy really likes to play fast openings in the Tanuki a lot. Um, so yeah, um, the next move, I think you can probably guess, it's the last corner, and if you approach it, white will probably, um, if, if, I, if black approaches this side, white will probably pincer, and uh, if black approaches this side, white will kick. So I went with the 3-3 invasion. So it's something, what I le something I learned from Elf Open Go is that uh, whenever you don't know what to do, you can invade 3-3. Um, so this is a typical opening kind of variation. The reason why I didn't extend... Um, so this is the typical kind of 3-3 three, three invasion variation. The reason why I didn't push at this point is that if black pushes in Hane, then black, white has this Hane move. Now, in this case, although black could just choose to take the right side for a slight loss locally, but I kind of don't like this variation. I just typically... Um, it feels very cramped um, to get direction I really don't like the local loss. Perhaps this is um, acceptable, but if Black Han is like this, um, White would be the right, the lo lower right corner would have a good um, complement with this um, result. So if Black captures like this, then White would develop influence. So in either case, White would develop influence facing the right side. So I think this would be good for White. 
So I didn't really want that. And if black Atari's, then white would also turn Atari down. So um, that's the reason why I attached because with the attachment, um, it's difficult for white to actually make that happen. Um, so in the game, white chose this variation. So actually, in, in this part, um, because um, black doesn't actually have the ladder, um, I actually completely missed this. Um, yeah, I this I, this happened again. I I misread the ladder, um, but luckily he didn't he didn't see it either. So actually, in this case, white could Atari here. Or actually, no, sorry. White could actually cut here. Um, so the latter being, when black Atari sin extends, white can just capture this stone. And black cannot ladder this side to the right, because after here, it becomes a tiger's mouth. So these stones actually really helped in this case. And I'm not sure if the 5%, did the AI think that, well, in the 3 invasion, would this happen? This might this might um, add to the, to the effect of that minus 5%. So it's possible. Um, so when you when you play this attachment for the 3 invasion, make sure you have the ladder, and don't read it wrong like I did, um, or <laughs> like we both did, because in the game, he didn't see it, and he, he played the Hane, and... So it actually reverted back to the regular Joseki. Um, <clears throat> so in this case, in the double Hane, white played here directly. Um, and then here, black shouldn't actually capture the stone. This was actually a mistake, because since white didn't exchange the Atari, there's actually a cut here, which actually turned out to be very severe. Um, so that was a kind of a misplay on my part as well. I should have just um, protected the cuts here, even though this kind of looks like a weird shape because he has two peeps. Um, but if white extends here, then white, um, then black could push one more and then make the seki. Um, and if white captures the corner, then uh, I guess black could just uh, ignore this or even just Atari um, and then uh, attack the weakness on the top upper side. So the, the only reason why this is okay for black is because the upper side is actually relatively weak. Um, so if you're wondering why black is choosing this variation, because this looks very narrow, and because of this stone, it's not going to get very big. So the, the goal for black is to actually get sente and uh, run the stone out. So in this case I captured, um, I thought it was Sente, so I did it, and then I went to the top upper side. Yeah, so the problem with this is that there is this cut here, and I kind of underestimated the severity of this. Although this um, does feel quite good. So, um, white capped in this case. So actually this move I felt was very comfortable, because it's difficult for white to answer. So if white goes for like a hardcore attachment, it's not very good because white black can just haunt it out. And um, black, white can't really do this by force. So if white cuts black and Atari, and if white extends, black will disconnect, and the right side will just get captured. And there's still a lot of Aji with this stone. For example, black can have some peeps here, um, which are also very uncomfortable. Actually, black can also attach here and talk after this Atari and attach on this side. So there's a lot of Aji with this stone still, and the two stones are pretty much dead already. Um, so this wouldn't be a very good result for white. If white uh, kept like this, black can just do this, um, and then find a co-threat. Um, for example, throw in, capture back, and then just cut this stone. Now this looks completely huge, um, which is very good for black, I think. So it's difficult for white to do this by force. So in the game, white played a looser cap, um, but Black can also get out here, and even though normally there's like a Tsuji that connects, but because of this black stone, um, black can just attach back and just connect back. It, after the wedge and connect, black can connect here. So there's no connection issue um, over here. So white actually can't connect back, which can be a problem. So it's difficult for white to deal with this stone, because if white is too stubborn, and wants to run this out, then there will be two groups, 
and this would be um, very difficult to manage for white. So in this case, it's best for white to treat these two stones like because black's not really going to, like for example, black's not going to play a move like this because it's kind of small. If you just capture these two stones later on when white plays something like this, it's still sente. Well, it could be sente, um, not now but later, and. Uh, so locally it's not too big. So what black wants is actually to extend out here and then kind of expand the whole thing. So this place is not definitely not as urgent as this group because this group is heavy, um, non-sackable. Um, so this, this side is very important. So in this game, um, I definitely can appreciate Andy's kind of how, how he handles these um, games, which I think is very good. So why cut here? One of the most um, uncomfortable moves, um, because so definitely black can't really let these stones die, and the reason is because this lower group, although it's dead, white needs to actually fill in a lot of stones to capture. So if black white is able to break through in any way, white gains a lot more territory than it looks like. So in this case, black can't just sacrifice, like for example. Um, black might be tempted to, um, or sorry, not the, that doesn't even work. The uh, to push and sacrifice, um, but white will just capture, and it makes everything super strong. And so these stones are way bigger than they look. And definitely not six points here. We're talking probably like fifteen or so. And in addition, there's um, thickness here because black has actually forcing moves on this side if these stones are alive. So that's very important. Um, so in this case, um, kind of a really uncomfortable situation because after I connect, when white jumps up, now black has its groups. So before it could have been a wall, but now it's actually can be weak groups, which turned out to be a very diff complicated fight. And this is kind of the start of, of everything. And so, white jumps out. <coughs> so in this case, white obviously can't jump to the left because there's a push and cut. So white jumps to the right, and then the Kosumi. Um, it's slightly uncomfortable for white now, but later on, white will get it back. And then black pushes and plays the knight's move. So in this case, I'm not feeling too bad because in this case black is getting free moves here um, in the middle so at least I can help the middle group and uh, perhaps come back to an extension on the right side that was kind of um, the goal and it's not good for white to simply connect back um, if white can't really do anything too much on this side white would have to still somehow make his shape good because uh, obviously um, this group still needs to ensure um, it's eye space. Um, but yeah, black will get the first move on the right side. So, black, um, white plays here to exploit this Aji here. So these, obviously, white, these three stones can't die for the same reason. The Liberty race here. So after the extension, um, white actually has a weakness here. So black can throw in. However, this is probably the worst move Black played in this game. Now, if you're wondering why, well, um, because it kind of looks good, right? If White captures, then you Atari, Atari, cut, White has to escape, and then you can even push twice. Um, oops. You can actually push twice and, and capture back. So this is like, what? what is White doing? Um, however, White doesn't have to capture. White can connect, and now when I Atari, White can capture here. And that's different, because now for this cut, um, Black can't really push out here. Because Black didn't get this Atari, if Black pushes out, the middle group is too weak, or if White just extends or whatever, Black has to come back here. And this group is in very it's, it's very dangerous. For this. I think white will probably actually play this move because white can come back to play the tiger's mouth and that's very good shape. Um, and the middle group is looking um, very cold. Um, 
like it doesn't have any ice base. So I don't think black can take the profit here. Um, because if, when white comes back here to attack, it's not a matter of just capturing this, but like look at the lower right, it's completely building up. So in terms of the whole board thinking, this is not a very obviously if black jumps out here, white comes back and what is black doing? <laughs> Gain nothing from, from all this making white very strong. And now these stones all look lively. So def definitely um, not a good result for black. So in the game I was forced to go back directly, which white connected. The reason why this is com particularly bad is look um, it, it, it looks quite subtle, which is why I didn't see this during the game. Because white got both of these moves. This move takes away the eye for the center group, which is crucial for living this group. This move took away all the center moves on potential center moves on this side. Because if if black um oh maybe I should have shown this earlier. Um if if black just tarries and descends, when white captures this um, so, for example, if black throws in, when white captures, white actually has to, um, oops, white can't, white wouldn't connect, white would capture, white would actually have to fill in all of these, so it would be like this. White wins the capture race, but, um, the territory is, um, 100 points at 1, 11, 21, so it's 21 points, which isn't too bad, um, if you think, well, it's it's quite a lot. It's it's not a small territory, but it's doesn't it's not as bad um, as it looks, not as big as it looks. Um, but after the series ex of exchanges that happen in the game, the amount of points here is way more because none of those are sent anymore because Black actually can't even honey um, because yo, um, you know, if White Atari is here, White can just capture. So none of those work anymore. And that is a huge difference. And also, if you notice, after this Atari, um, Black can't even fill in another stone, so none of those are sent anymore. A loss in co-threats and at least five points, I'd say. Also, this is two points, and this is I space. So all of that adds up. Um, I think I checked. I don't remember quite what the number was, but I think this move um, lost probably about 15 to 20%. I think that's a good good estimate. It was around there. So probably the worst, one of the worst moves played. Um, so definitely should have played here. And the main difference this makes is that with this, um, Block would never throw in. And that is a... It looks subtle, but it's uh, one eye. It's a lot of territory on the side. And that really killed my mood um, during the game. Because um, right up when I throw in, I... So I... I don't know why, but I thought white wouldn't connect and white would actually save these two stones um, and ignore me, um, which is a terrible judgment. Um, and I should have thought more in here. So what should have happened is, so if white connects, then black can throw in capture. But if white does the same thing in the game, then obviously black would never throw in here. So now let's talk about some better moves. So actually what happened, after what happened here, um, this this turned out to be quite a bad result. So after here, um, white connected, <clears throat> and black really needs to worry about this now because after this safe eye, white just needs one eye left, and that's very easy to get on the outside. Not to mention, there's actually some Aji here, which is a bit of foreshadowing for the future. If you can see some Aji there, then I'd say you're probably at least five den. Um, so here, I really need to settle this group, so I actually was forced to play some moves in the center. And this is more of a, uh, a, a fighting move, you know, I, I've had, I think this kind of shows my fighting spirit, because if I just play normally, I really didn't feel that this game was going in a very good direction. Because think about it, before there was the weak group, um, even though black gained a little bit of territory here, White completely settled it and made this group weak, and also gained points on the side. So basically, not many points gained here for Black because White gained some points here. Not to mention this group is weak, and also this is escapable. If this was weak, this is not escapable. So all these added together um, turned out to be 
not very good situation. Right? So at this point, I kind of felt not that good. So I even ignored the knight's move here, I blocked, and extended. So this actually activates a bit of potential from from this upper right corner. So of course, white would uh, actually do something to here. And actually, this is a good time to you know maybe pause and it'd be time good time to think about where you think white should play. Um, because in this case, it's kind of messy, but it's also one of those really important mid-game situations um, where if you know where to play, um, you can improve your game a lot. So, um, are you ready? <laughs> so white played this move, and the, the, this move is to make this a weak group, which is going to clash with another group that's also not alive. And this is a good um, way to start a fight here. So if white simply attacked this side, it may not be sente directly because black actually has a decent amount of eye space. So like if white makes some enclosure that's relatively loose, then it might not be sente. Black might just capture this, and uh, unless you can kill this, um, black would profit quite a bit from just simply capturing this in, at this stage of the game. Um, so, in game Andy played the Kosumi, which actually made me sweat quite a bit because now even like these two, well, white also has two groups, but black's groups are coming together, and also this group is pretty much alive. So white jumps, black extends, and white jumps again. <clears throat> so the uh, idea is again to force black to go into another group but not let black connect. So after pushing, black pushed here again. So this move is actually, it looks kind of slow because it doesn't even connect back. But this move is uh, threatening white because he, now after this move, if white ignores, there's going to be sente moves here. And having sente moves here would make living above easier. And also, it takes away the ability for white to uh, capture this stone. So it's, a, it's kind of like a strength move, kind of building building strength to unleash in the future. But white takes a move in the center and jumps. So actually in this case, there's a small trap that I left for an opponent, which he didn't, unfortunately he didn't fall for it. If white haunts, black can actually cut here. And uh, since black can't, white can't capture, um, for example, um, black can push her. So, um, this is a uh, definite sente for black, so I, I'm kind of assuming this, um, but I, I'm sorry, I kind of forgot to mention it. But this is sente for black, that's why I am I said that these moves are sente. Um, but black can exchange that and uh, cut here. So white actually has to push through. And this way of capturing the group is not very good, and it's difficult to capture, because if white does this, um, black can actually exchange here, or black can actually connect. So it's difficult to cut this. And if white cannot cut this, white has to connect back, which spends a move on the inside. Then black would obviously can do whatever he wants from the side. So that would be a big mistake. And in this case, white jumped, extend, and white plays the bamboo shape. Although it looks super complicated, the, the, this idea is actually quite simple. And the, sim the simplified version of, of this complex game is basically Black right now needs to judge whether if Black plays here, White captures this, can Black just, I don't know, do a one space extension and capture the whole thing? Um, I was not able to make that judgment. And I guess my conclusion was that it's difficult. Um, I kind of felt uncertain um, that this would be capturable. And even like this, white could probably kind of squeeze inside this way. And if white black goes here, that just seems really, really empty. And I definitely wouldn't be comfortable capturing something like this. So I think I spent one or two billion periods here. And I was thinking, and but then I decided, no, I definitely have to make this group alive. Um, because with two moves, I don't think I can uh, 
seal in the whole deal. Even though white can definitely capture this in one move. Which is bad, because white gets the first move on that side, and white could benefit a lot from that. So, um, you know, in this kind of really difficult or complicated fights, you know, sometimes one move is just one move is required. Um, so here, I had to live this and made this move to live. So in this case, white exchanged a few moves here, um, which, which um, really is to make the Atari Sentes to protect um, this potential cut here. So right now, white cannot capture, even though it looks like going here is a way of taking away the eye, but the outside is way too weak. So, so white can actually Atari here first and then attach here, but in this case, the outside is too weak. One, the this group is not completely settled, so the Liberty race is hard to tell, but also, um, after the capture, um, the outside is very weak. So the throwing in Sente and black and push and cut. So the outside is very um, is is not strong enough yet. So white cannot can't actually um, do this right now. <clears throat> so in the game, white goes back and center. And I, and I believe in this case, he kind of he probably felt good because I really felt like I was doing very bad um, because in this case the middle still had a lot of Aji. Like if, if white even has this stone, white could just attach and capture the whole thing, um, which is really bad because now this group I still have to worry about. I'm going to have no territory here because white's going to settle this group and uh, it's going to be hard for black to gain any more territory going towards the end game. So the attachment was kind of bad and by now I was in Bio Yomi, so probably some of my moves were kind of less thought out so I did some exchanges and I pushed once and I did some kind of moves because I was trying to judge the situation. Um, one, um, th there's looks like there's some Aji, so I was calculating this. And two, what the heck am I going to do with all of this stones here? Um, yeah, it's a very difficult situation to be in. <clears throat> so after careful thinking, I decided I wanted to push. And the meaning of this move is to actually make sure that this group is alive so we don't have to worry about it in the future. Um, if white blocks, then black can capture in Sente because um, of this weakness. If white goes over here, black can actually throw in and cut. And the only w way for white to li win the Liberty race is to Atari under connect. Actually, right now, black has the option of capt uh, racing with the corner by playing this move in Atari and capture. So this extends Liberty by a lot and you can, there's going to be a Liberty, Liberty raise here. But even like kind of simply dealing with it, what black can turn, what white must connect, and then black and Atari here, white has to capture, and then the capture is Sente for sure, so black can actually jump out to the right. So that's actually completely destroys the territory here and it's difficult for white to actually capture this side because black can just Hane and Tiger's Mouth and that's a way to connect back so that was kind of what I was thinking there so that leaves a very big Aji and then black can just try to settle the middle group by um, I don't know maybe Tiger's Mouth or or um, yeah probably Tiger's Mouth because there's a cut here as well but anyway, so in the game, I was at, though I was still a little surprised that um, in the game, um, um, Andy didn't block. He actually made this Atari. Um, this is also a good move, and he kind of just saying, "I don't care about this. I'm just gonna take the bigger empty spaces." And now after this move and Atari, these three stones <laughs> look very lonely here. And not to mention, this group is also kind of hanging there as well. And. Uh, now I play the Tiger's Mouth. The reason why I played this move is because this group still isn't completely alive, um, and I want to threaten this group. And the reason um, why these two stones are especially important is because this middle group has a weakness here as well. So that's um, that's why I felt that these two stones are probably the most important, and also part of 
partly to make the game more complicated because um, if black just simply makes this alive, white can make black make this alive, perhaps even just capturing these two stones or like if black does this and uh, just connects back um, white black doesn't have enough territory white has the corner here, this corner and white can make more here but black doesn't have any more other than the original um, two corners from the beginning so I really fell behind at this point and uh, after this move White played another Tsuji, which kind of, which almost uh, made me kind of feel this game is um, very difficult to play now. So let me explain what this move means. If Black captures, White can Atari and ascend. So this is actually called Golden Chicken, standing on one leg. Um, it's actually a, a direct translation of a Chinese saying, um, and the meaning Black cannot Atari on either side. So White wins the Liberty Race. And, no, white wouldn't play here now, but after this exchange, this group would be alive already. So white is just getting the first move, so we're going to pretty much capture the three stones. Um, so black definitely can't do that. But what if black connects? If black connects, um, white can connect. And there's no way for black to actually reduce the liberty, which really sucks. because. Um, so if you can't do this because of a, a bunch of throw-ins, white can extend the liberty. And uh, so Black actually has to make this move. Black actually can't even make this move because then the turn would be Sente and Black can't block it anymore because of the throw in here. So Black actually has to make this move. And uh, after the turn, this is also Sente because Black only has four liberties here. So if Black, if Black connects, White just captures the whole thing. So Black has to block, which means both of these are sente, which means white can make the eye very easily here. I th I'm pretty sure white can tanuki now and still have an eye on the side. And up. So white just comes here and it's done. So I couldn't even respond to it here anymore, which is really leaving like a 30-point a move um, by just atari here, um, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> now, this move is really what's made this game really complicated and, and I think this is where I actually found my chance so black plays here um, this move separates this middle group and obviously black has to deal with this group like this group is not alive so how many groups do we have like one two three four groups um, oops that's, that was a WeChat message so how many groups does black have one two three groups So how many groups does black have right now? One, two, well this group is alive now, so one, two, three, this group is hanging in there. Um, this white group is alive, so white has one and two groups. Um, there's a lot of Aji here, but we'll, we'll get to that later. So we have all these groups happening, and none of these can be captured, pretty much. So white just um, pushes and cuts because that makes black uh, make this Tiger's Mouth exchange, so it's forced to make that exchange, and then Kosumi. The good thing about this is that White actually can't attach out because of the Liberty shortage, so White actually has to play this move, and then after connecting, so this is actually a good exchange because later on, White will play this Atari to uh, connect anyway, so White actually has to, so, but White has to connect now, so it's very likely that Black won't be able to get this exchange later. So after this exchange, attachment. Um, I'm not sure that this is actually a good move. I don't think it is now. Um, probably I should have just played the knight's move here. Because after white descends, black still can't get this group. Um, which is a kind of a pointless exchange and made just the, the corner stronger. Um, another attach, you can probably tell I'm kind of short on time. After a few exchanges, I went back to the middle because I kind of have to. Um, <clears throat> and after these time sujis, <laughs> if you can call it that, um, I kind of lured Y into making a bad move. So this this turn is actually the first um, question move, move, questionable move that any made, um, which is actually quite um, 
it's, it's I think it's it's quite amazing because the, I mean this this game is like almost near the end and it's like the first question will move after the turn all of these moves are going to be sente so it actually lost a lot of points in the corner and this turn doesn't really help as much for the center so a very um, a move that results in a big loss so after this so in this case white shouldn't have made this exchange and should have just Atari in the middle directly so this move lost probably about 15 to 20 percent so that's equivalent to my uh, throw in here and we'll see why that it loses so much um, in, a, in a second um, so after the throw in this Atari is sent here. And white can't do this because after the um, so one, white doesn't want to give black too many sente moves on this side because after black connects, black can still choose to capture the center group. Um, also, the second thing is if black captures, why can't block? Because if white blocks, then this whole thing will be co, and that's definitely unacceptable. So white would have to do something to um, escape. But then after black extends, black is going to be able to raise the liberties with the corner, and that's going to be very, very important. Um, <clears throat> um, and definitely uh, devastating for white. So white's going. White has to connect, and then which made the uh, Atari and capture a very big sente move. Um, so, and again, actually, um, I saw this clamp, which um, looked very nice, but it doesn't really do anything. <laughs> it's one of those like kind of moves that feel really good but that doesn't actually gain you anything so why can't Atari here because if this move is Sente um, now these two are Mia if white captures here block an Atari here and so white can't defend both if white defends here then block connects and uh, white is in danger so these two are Sente so white gets captured here um, but white can just connect and uh, Nothing really is gained because if I play the tiger's mouth, this I can clamp anyway. So it's kind of those like looks cool, but doesn't really do much to Suji's. Actually, I don't think you you can even call them to Suji's. Um, so after capturing, I went back here, um, which is uh, to make this group alive. And actually, I kind of wanted to threaten this group more. So right now, if white, um, if I just go back. To the right side, um, white can just simply take one of the big end games, and black still doesn't have enough, unfortunately. So black comes back here in hope to threaten the corner and both make this alive. And also, it actually threatens the uh, connecting back, so it kind of reduces this also a little bit. Um, you can kind of tell kind of my, my mentality. So. The reason why I didn't go back here was that the game would be simple. So if I connect back, the game would be too simple. For example, if white just wedges, this group would still be in danger. And the, this group is also going to get bullied. So if black just lives this other side, um, um, actually white probably um, will do something. Oh, actually, so uh, let's say white plays here. That's pretty much Sente in this group. So if Block doesn't capture the middle, Block would have to try to make this group alive. And let's say Block can make this group alive. White cuts this off, captures these stones, and it's pretty much over. Like, uh, it's gonna, th this is gonna be a small group, and these are gonna die. And so, what Block still doesn't have enough liberties, which is really unfortunate because it feels like black can actually gain from all these decisions but again these were comfortable moves well black definitely gained here but these were just comfortable moves that didn't really gain anything so after coming back here white captures then black goes here and then jumps down so um again uh i'm still trying to benefit without protecting this group and that is because um, if white tries to capture, I can always connect back right now. So after this move, I'll, for for sure, um, this group will be captured in sente. So if white just cuts here, then.
then black would be able to live both groups. Or actually, this wouldn't even work because white's too weak. Um, so white would have to push again. Then black could just live both groups. And that's definitely no good for white. So at this point, white just needs to connect back. But in the game, he chose a very interesting way of connecting, which um, left a place for error, which is where I found my chance. So after connecting, so in here, white should wedge because it makes black weak still. Um, <clears throat> and now black definitely needs to protect here. But in the, in the game, white played here because he was looking at the push and Atari um, and cutting on the other side. But now, after making an exchange, actually these are just kind of time moves there, don't have too much meaning. I, I finally went back to protect this upper group. And these moves were kind of just moves I was trying to get more time, which actually ended up losing a bunch of points, but I really need to make sure. So after the attachment, um, here actually, this did leave something here. So if white doesn't answer here, black can, um, black can actually push and jump. This group is not alive yet, so there's actually more going on than just some simple time moves. But obviously I shouldn't have done that all of this, I actually just left it. Um, but now white has to protect in over here. But in this case, white made some exchanges, and these exchanges is actually what co cost white the game. Um, so white should have protected back, and the reason is because this move is actually sente. Um, because if white answers in the corner, black can jump and pull back. And white is dead. Because black has three liberties, and white only has two left. So this is a faster way of reducing. And because that's sente, white has to answer. And then when black jumps in, the whole corner is dead. And that, this actually doesn't didn't work um, if white didn't exchange this, because if black jumps here, white can actually play this move in sente, um, because now if white protects the corner, let's say Minotauris, this is pretty much alive because and if black jumps, there's another half eye in the middle, so white is actually alive. Um, this move doesn't actually work because after here, black has to connect to keep reducing, but then white can extend. And if black pushes, there's actually no way to reduce this to under three liberties. Well, you can see now that after the Atari, there's four liberties here, and obviously black has to connect now. And so there's no way to capture this group. So, this is a very crucial mistake, um, which I'm, well, I'm very grateful for. Um, because uh, the whole time, Black was really fighting for a mistake, and that, that is the second mistake. And after this, um, the corner gets captured, and now it's very difficult for White to gain anything back, because, well, there's, I guess there's nothing left. And so after all this fighting, Black was able to live this group and keep enough pressure on White to live everything, but also capture white's corner as well. So the difference isn't as huge as you might think because um, at this point every move is worth a lot of points. So for example um, if white simply protects here um, let's say I just put, I just block the Zen and Sente and so there's some points here for black and uh, black just uh, pushes through here I guess to capture the upper side. The difference isn't very, isn't that big um, because the corner is doesn't white doesn't have that many points in the corner, um, and so um, it's still not you know too sure. So what I'm trying to say is that even though like how how big this mistake looks is actually not as uh, big as you might think. Um, because black still needs to spend a move. The main loss here is that white made some in inner exchanges that actually um, died inside. 
So after this, black captures the corner, white goes here, and uh, black just connects back. So after a while, um, we pretty much get to end game. So after a few exchanges, things are pretty much clear cut, and uh, then we uh, get to end game. Um, so in the end, um, black actually won by uh, four and a half points. Um, sorry, five, uh, five and a half points. Um, black actually normally can't win by four and a half. Um, it's uh, two and three quarter stones. We count in Chinese rules um, because it's pretty, pretty much equivalent to AJ rules when you count the stones. Um, so very, very hard fought game. If you're still with me, thank you for <laughs> tuning in for this long because I'm sure I w may have. I was. I'm sure I've lost some of you when uh, I was going through this hard fight, but when you're dealing with all these groups, you're definitely more happy when you're the side that's behind, because when it's more complicated, there's more room for the winning side to make a mistake. I think that's that would be my take-home message here. Um, the details, um, if you can appreciate them, I definitely appreciated it because I was really happy to see that this was Sente and actually was able to capture the corner. Um, and you know, just all this fight, I, I probably half the time I didn't know what's going on. Just hang, hitting the clock at sixty seconds, it was, it was just me hanging in there, trying to uh, look for chances. But in the end, I'm really glad it, it worked out. If you guys are interested. Um, I can uh, go over the uh, finals for the Ink Cup, so um, you get to see who actually uh, became the representative. Um, but if you saw the AJ News, you probably saw it already. But uh, the uh, next game is uh, more to do with openings, um, which is also maybe more interesting than this kind of this whole board fighting game, um, which actually almost always ends up the case with a, a game against Andy. But anyway, really had a blast playing this game. It was uh, definitely fun going over it with Again. Actually, uh, had to read over this uh, um, this fight again myself to uh, remind myself. Um, and I just going back to the ink clocks and uh, kind of like the reading seconds really brings a lot of nostalgia. Like during the pro qualifiers and during these tournaments, always there's these uh, reading seconds and just, you know, kind of gets the adrenaline going, you know. Um, so, uh, I'll stop rambling here. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Let me know if you have any questions about anything at all. I'll respond to all your questions. So I hope you learned something from this video and that this was enjoyable to watch. If you want to see the finals, leave a comment. And I really appreciate it if you leave a like and website and socials in the description below. So, catch you next week! Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and welcome to a new video in the casual online... Nope, not casual online game series. This is Pro Game Review.